morning guys so we got a nice chilly one today about 20 degrees right now so i'm gonna get out and haul some manure the spreader's already filled from the other day we were cleaning some pens out i'm gonna get that hauled out first should be an interesting day today they want to start building the silo it's a little bit too cold right now to pour concrete but it should be up close to 40 degrees later today my dad's finishing the feeding right now we have a little bit of herd work we want to do then try to sneak a little bit of manure out before that We got a tiny bit of snow on the ground, less than an inch. If we haul when it's too warm, the fields are soft. We gotta wait for a cold day like this. Ideally, there's no snow on the ground, but we'll be fine. It's not gonna run off. This will melt down today. The ground's not frozen very deep. I'm in the dairy barn now. I wanna work at some herd work. Cows are all tied in. There's five cows we're breeding this morning. Oh, we have a custom breeder that's going to come in. I'm just marking those. I picked the bulls out for them to use. We're grabbing blood samples from the cows we bred four weeks ago today. There's nine cows. I want to get a blood sample for pregnancy testing. One of them is this 823. This is a special needs pen. I'm starting this group. Got to get a blood sample for 823 and 827. These both had a bit of a sore foot. That's why they're in this pen. This is a really good cow. It's 823, so hopefully she's pregnant now. This is the tube we get the blood sample with. It's got a vacuum in it. I'm just going to put the cow's number on there. And then we got this little plastic holder, put the tube in the bottom of it, and then we got a two-sided needle. One side has a rubber coat to it, keep the blood from flowing until you poke it into the vacuum tube. And there's a blood vessel in the tail, so you just push the tail up, pretty easy to catch it. There we go, that's all we need. Making my way out to the free stall now. We've been doing blood pregnancy testing for years. We really like to be able to get results every week. As soon as we can know if a cow's pregnant, we'd like to know so that way, if she's not, we can get her back on a shot program to get her in heat as soon as possible, get her bred again. And the vet does come once a month. We recheck cows with the vet a little later on to make sure they're still holding their pregnancy and everything's good. This is one to breed this morning. It's very easy for the custom breeder to find them with the mark on the rump like that. We don't use any conventional Holstein semen anymore. We either breed with the Sext, which uh, basically gives us a guarantee of a heifer calf, or with an Angus uh, make a crossbred beef calf. This is one we're going to breed to hopefully get a Holstein heifer calf out of. She's got good genetics. She's a good young animal. They're gonna get started setting up to build this silo today. Got all the forms on this truck. It's gonna be a while until they're pouring any concrete, but they're getting there now. First row of forms take the longest to set up because they have to get everything spaced out properly. The location of the doors and the, the pipe and different parts there, they gotta make sure everything's straightened out, level. I got that pile cleaned up at home, and now I'm going to clean out this barn at the pregnant heifer farm. We'll scoop this out, put some new bedding in for them. We don't have as many head at this farm now, which helps. It doesn't get as messy, but it's definitely due for a cleaning. We're bedding with sawdust this year because we don't have any bean stubble or corn fodder. It helps keep it a little bit drier, even if it looks dirty. It's still relatively solid. It needs to be cleaned out now. Some of you are wondering what we're going to be doing with these heifers at this rented farm once we get our robot feeder going how are we going to feed these so we only have about 20 head at this farm now because we're raising a few less heifers than we used to the plan is just to bring them all to the home place since we're going to be feeding and pushing up the heifer barn at home more often 
I'm okay with adding a few head to that barn. Our dry cow barn is not at full capacity, so the rest will be able to fit in that building. So we'll kind of split them. 10 of them will go into the heifer barn at home and 10 of them into the dry cow barn. That dry cow barn has 51 stalls, and right now we have about 25 or 30 head in there normally, so adding 10 to that will be fine. I don't want it at full capacity because it's a three row barn. It's gonna be overstocked if we have to put 50 in that barn. I think it's gonna be nice too for these heifers. It's always hard to keep them clean at this farm. Especially in the summertime, they want to go in the building, be in the shade, but we can't really keep it dry too easily. Even though we have pastures, they don't go out in the pastures enough. So we'll get them up there into the stalls. We'll have fans for them. It's going to be nicer. So we rent this farm from our neighbor, and they do a little bit of beef. They buy some beef cross calves off of us. They're planning to run some more beef, so they are going to be using these buildings. We might help them fill one of these silos. That way they can just feed silage to beef cattle. I don't know if everything's quite decided at this point. i got to walk back and get the spreader. My dad brought some bedding down. So they want to pour this today. I'm not sure what all they have to do until they can pour. But they had to spend time making sure it was perfectly level. They put these little shims in there to make sure they want to get it straight, start straight. Got a lot of heavy rebar in there. It's after lunch now, and we're going to work in the calf barn, cleaning some pens out. Getting a delivery from our dairy supply company right now. Got a tote of this uh, for a foot bath for the cows. Having a little bit more issues with hairy warts on our cows' feet. We have very clean, dry floors with our slats and uh, the scrapers running, but we still have some issues with some sore feet. It's called Ultra 2-in-1. It's a pretty common used product. It's a little bit more expensive than what we were doing, but we're hoping to see some improvement in the, the cow's feet. We're going to clean some pens out now. We can't spread in the fields anymore. It's too soft, but uh, we can pile it out back if, if we can't fit it on a spreader. They don't use a concrete pump, they use a winch and a, a big bucket to lift the concrete up to the silo.
Got an electric winch there. It's a fairly small bucket. To run a concrete pump would just be too much because you're doing four foot at a time. It's going to take six and a half yards of concrete per ring now, not even a full truck to, to do this ring. The mix is pretty dry this first batch because there's a little bit of a gap at the bottom of the forms. He said they're going to have to vibrate a bunch to make sure it's filled in everywhere. I'm going to chase this cow up from the dry cow barn because it's the biggest cow that we have. We normally just keep her in the special needs pen all the time because she's so big to be in the free stalls. But now we just dried her off and put her in this barn. She wasn't laying down. I don't think she's too happy. So I'm just gonna chase her up to the pre-fresh. She's gonna stay in there for the whole dry period. We're gonna set that new foot bath product right here on this pallets. So this is our foot bath. Every cow walks through it single file after the milking. We run it three days a week. Lately we've been using dry copper sulfate. We get in bags and then we mix it with water to make the foot bath. This two-in-one product we're getting has the copper sulfate in and it also has formaldehyde in it. Our hoof trimmer really recommended we use formaldehyde. The problem with formaldehyde is it's a little bit unsafe, especially before you mix it. This two-in-one product is a little bit safer. It's a little bit diluted. But the key is we're going to keep this tote outside, make sure we have fresh air around so it's not going to be indoors and making gas that so we'd be breathing in. It's really not unsafe once you mix it into the foot bath. It's pretty diluted at that point. And we got plenty of air in there. That is a priority for us. Whoever's mixing the foot bath, we want to make sure they're not uh, being put in danger of their health. Now I'm gonna work at putting some Smax Tech pills into these heifers. Got some more that are coming up to breeding age that need a pill. Uh, it'll be eight or 10 of them, I think. So I'm gonna tie these in and push the feet up. Here we got our new box of boluses. It's nice now, we're just putting the boluses in the heifers at breeding age, and then they'll come into the barn, they'll already have their bolus. It'll give us a calving alert, and then we can monitor them as they as they freshen when they start milking then. These boluses will last the lifetime of the cow. Uh, they're guaranteed for the lifetime, so if it does stop working in five years or something, we can get a replacement uh, at no cost. So for the heifers, we're mainly just using these to breed them, but it is nice to have the bolus in, we can catch if. If one would lose her calf, we'd be able to tell if she comes back in heat later. If one is sick, if it has a fever for some reason, we can catch issues with that too. I'm getting more experience with the Smax Tech now after having it in for a year, and I'm really liking it. All I gotta do is scan this bolus into my phone, and then I'll assign it to a heifer and give her the pill. That'll be it. Our next animal without a bolus is number 140, right there. I ended up putting in 12 boluses. Now we're caught up to any heifers that are 12 months old. By about 12 and a half months, I like to have a bolus in them. A couple of these were getting towards 13, so it's definitely time for it. 
the silo builders just took off. They're done for the day. Got the first ring poured. They set the form for the next layer on the outside. I'm gonna lift that up tomorrow. So they're gonna have three four foot forms set up at a time and they'll just move the bottom form up to the top four or four feet move the bottom one up again so they can pour up to 12 feet in a day they can do three different pours in one day once they get rolling today they had a lot of setup work getting everything right they're planning to pour three layers now tomorrow they got quite a setup in there that that whole floor is gonna rise with them as they're working they will keep raising that up i'm not sure what that all hangs on if it just holds on to the forms that concrete cart there it's hydraulic driven that's what they're using to move the concrete around. It's the next day here and we're running the foot bath with this new product for the first time. We take one five gallon bucket of the product, then we add water to it. It's about 40 gallons in our foot bath. Should help get rid of some of these warts we're having issues with. They just poured the third layer. Now they're gonna pull the forms off the bottom and flip them up to the top. They get the outside form into place, then they lay the rebar in, then they place their inside form. It doesn't take very long to switch it. We had them start to shoot right there on the, the third layer, so that's eight feet from the base. It'll be about six feet from the, the fill we have down there. So that's where we'll have our conveyor running the feet out of. It's nice these guys pour that right in with the silo, so it's a solid shoot. It's not just a poly thing you attach to the side of the silo like our staves are. They're done for the day, Friday afternoon, so we'll be back next week. They got those three rings poured today. Thanks for watching this video, guys. It's going to be interesting to keep watching that silo get built. We'll keep building next week. Might have some cold days that will slow them down a little bit, but we'll see what happens. Thanks a lot for watching, guys.